Shalawah, more praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Harakar, Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And Shalawah unto the hopeful elect. <coughs> this is a biblical commentary on the book of Joshua, the 11th chapter, and it reads And it came to pass when Jabun, king of Hazor, had heard those things that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Sh Shimron, and to the king of Akshaf. And to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and to the plains of uh, of the plains of south of Sinaroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and to the Amorite and to the Hittite, Salakia, and the Hittite and the Perizzite, Perizzite, and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite upon Hermon in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many, many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together as the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time will I deliver them, up all slain before Israel, thou shalt hock their, horse, their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Now, that great multitude that was gathered as the sand of the sea, you know, through faith, you know, if you if you wouldn't have, if you looked through unfaithful eyes, you would have looked saw that you would have thought something like, oh, the Most High has gathered these nations to take us out. But if you look through faithful eyes. You would have known he gathered them to all together to be destroyed in that place. And that's what the Lord was doing. And and this is, goes back to the, the it's a similar um, form of story, you know, with the hawking of the horses. That's basically, you know, cutting the hamstrings of the horses so they're basically useless and burning the chariots. If you know anything about horses, they have great value, all right? And they're, they're, they're of royal possession, all right? It's basically like back then it's like having a Lamborghini, a luxury sports car, basically. So the Lord was saying, destroy those things and burn the chariots with fire. Just like going back to when you had Jericho, you know, being taken out and nothing to be taken from there. Alright? So reading on. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom. Merom suddenly and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon and unto Mizreth Oph Maim, Maim, and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward. And they smote them until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hocked their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. Okay, and Joshua at the time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword for Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms all right and they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword utterly destroying them and there was not any left to breathe and he burnt Hazor with fire and all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword and he utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. But as, a ki but as for the, the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazar only, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoil of these cities and the cattle, the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. But every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they destroyed them, neither left they any to breathe. So, you know, it just shows you that most side they had to do you know the, the destruction according to his commandment all right that was given through Moses as the Lord commanded Moses his servant so did Moses command Joshua and so did Joshua he left nothing undone of all the Lord com commanded Moses so Joshua took all the land the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same even from Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir unto Baal Gad 
in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. Joshua made a made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that he made peace with, that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gebion, as we read before. All the other they took in battle. For it was the Lord that hardened their hearts that they should have should come against Israel in battle and he might destroy them utterly that they might have no favor but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses so this is performed according to the Most High's will that he set in their hearts to do it all right and really going back to the curse of Canaan for it to be fulfilled through the children of Israel all right and you know for them to basically be utterly destroyed and at that time came Joshua and cut off the um, Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debir, and from Anab, and from all uh, the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave it for inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. So with that, man, I pray you edify, shalom.